All right. Testing a starry on damage. Let me go and begin the fight with some cloud of daggers. Just to make sure we're concentrating on a spell. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Let's go ahead and go to the center of the room. Take these opportunity attacks. Hopefully don't break concentration. Nice. Just want to make sure we have advantage in all our attacks. Okay, let's begin. So, so far we've done a little bit of damage with Cloud of Daggers. Slashing Flourish number one. Okay, she's almost dealt with. Slashing Flourish number two. Boop, boop. Cool, cool. Do a little action surge here. Slashing Flourish number three. Boop, boop. Slashing Flourish number four. Boop, boop. Offhand attack. Offhand attack. And we still have one more slashing flourish left. So if I was hasted, I'd be able to do another slashing flourish, killing pretty much four high HP targets. That's pretty damn good, to be honest. Shit. Yo, what's going on with y'all, man? A, we back to you again with another video guide. And this time, we are making the ultimate bow user. And we're going to be dual wielding hand crossbows because dual wielding hand crossbows is kind of crazy in this game, okay? Um,. And as you saw, it is not your normal ranger because we actually, uh, for the final build, we don't actually go into any ranger levels at all. We will be starting off as a ranger because while you're playing through the game, just starting off as a ranger is just easier to play uh, than, a, than a bard, you know, if you just want to do damage. But later on, when we get to the final part of the build, I'll show you, you know, the multi-classes, what spells to get, the items to get how to play the build, and all that kind of stuff. But for now, we're going to go through the level progression uh, and how you're going to be playing throughout the game, early, mid, and late. All right, so first, let's start off as a ranger at level one, you know what I'm saying, as the bow user in the group for your favorite enemy. I like to go ranger knight, so you have proficiency with heavy armor. This means now you have proficiency in light, medium, heavy, and shield so if you if, if your party has any extra gear you're you'll probably be able to wear it so i like to go ranger knight just to be all around you know what i'm saying and for the natural explorer i like to go poison it's pretty easy to find fire and coal resistance throughout the game you know there's a there's, there's a short bow called the dark fire short bow which gives you fire and coal resistance um if you don't want to do wield hand crossbows uh, but you can also go urban urban tracker to get proficiency in sleight of hand the thing is you can already get proficiency in sleight of hand because uh, it comes with it. And of course, we're going to use our Boris Starion for this, for this demo because he is supposed to be the dexterity guy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, as, far as, as far as the stats goes, if you're not going to use the Hag here, uh, I, would, I would recommend getting 16 dexterity because that is our main damage stat. 16 wisdom because as a ranger, that is our spell casting modifier. Get a little bit of constitution for a little bit of HP and the rest you can put into intelligence because you don't really need strength or charisma. At least not yet. For this uh, starting build as far as the abilities go again you should already proficient uh, be proficient in sleight of hand uh, as a dexterity user and I want to make sure and because you are the, the dexterity user you want to make sure you're proficient in stealth as well stealth is very very good in this game if you don't know now you know you just got to use it right and of course um, I just picked up survival and animal handling because that was a that was a theme of uh, uh, of this build because uh, because you have a little bit of wisdom um, so perception, survival, and animal handling are pretty relevant in the game. You know what I'm saying? So that's level one. Level two, we're going ranger again. And this time we're going to get some ranger spells. And of course, the cream of the crop, hunter's mark, very classic D&D &D ranger spell. That You want to use this as a bonus action. You want to always be concentrating on this pretty much. Um, and then it just puts a little bit of more damage, uh, especially uh, all throughout the game especially early game. So you want to make sure you pick up Hunter's Mark. This is your concentration spell. You want to concentrate on this all day, every day. And then the next spell that I would choose is Longstrider because Longstrider actually does not use a spell slot. 
It is one of very few uh, spells in the game called Ritual Spells. And you pretty much just want to cast this on yourself and every single party member. And it doesn't... It's free movement speed. Free movement speed for combat. Very useful. Long Strider, get it. And of course, the fighting style that we're going to choose is archery because we are a bow boy. Okay, so that's level two. Level three, we're still going to go ranger and we get another ranger spell. Again, I would choose enhanced sleep. It is another ritual spell. It doesn't last the whole day like Long Strider does, but it does last. You know, there, there, are, there are some points in the game where your team does not have enough... Uh, jumping jumping speed or jumping distance this will give you it for that little for that little uh, moment and then you'll be able to jump through you know uh from a cliff to another cliff it's very useful again and it's another ritual spell so it does not cost a spell slot enhance sleep get it at level three and of course the subclass that we're going to choose is probably the one that you've seen the most is gloom stalker because they just get so many good stuff you get an extra turn at the start of combat assuming you go first uh you get more even more dark vision you can pretty much just see everything all around you in the underdark or everywhere in the world and you get some bonus actions to hide as a dread uh, as a gloom stalker and of course you can go totally invis with humble shroud and you get another ritual spell in disguise self where you get to just turn yourself into any race in the game uh and uh sometimes you don't fit into small spaces gnomes and halflings can't uh, can do that you can do that too or if there are certain items certain items in the game that give like like for example there are there are you've probably seen some items that give gith yankees buff you can turn yourself into a gith yankee and because it's a ritual spell it does not cost a spell slot so very useful stuff here as a gloom stalker i recommend this subclass uh, and we're not replacing any of our spells because we love our spells so far. So that's level three. At level four, we're still going to stick with Ranger, mainly because we get a feat. And the feat we're going to choose um, is actually not Sharpshooter because this early in the game, we don't really have enough items uh, and just haven't explored that much of the uh, part of the game because sharpshooter you get a minus five penalty to your attack rolls and we just don't have enough dexterity or, or items to be able to supplement that so we're actually just going to go for an ability score improvement here plus two decks very easy and of course if you have chosen the hag hair you, your decks will be 20 at this point um which is really really good early game okay so that's level four ability score improvement plus two decks at level five, we're still gonna stick with Ranger. This is actually the last Ranger level that I would stick with because uh, we get extra attack. Extra attack now on top of our Gloomstalker attack, on top of our uh, regular attack, on top of our offhand attack, we get another attack. And then if we're hasted, we get even two more attacks. So extra attack, obviously, okay. And of course, as a Gloom Stalker, you get they just get, they just give you Misty Step for free. Another reason why Gloom Stalker is really really good. Misty Step, one of the best mobile skins in the game, skills in the game, and it only costs a bonus action as well. So level five extra attack, Misty Step from Glo Gloom Stalker, and of course the spell that we're gonna choose is Spike Growth. If you haven't used Spike Growth, I would suggest doing it. The uh, Hunter's Mark is great for single target, but sometimes there's just like 20 rats that you got to deal with and Spike Growth will do that. It covers a large AoE, it halves their movement speed, and every time um, they take damage when you first cast it, and they take damage as they walk through it. It's so good for... Um, control and damage in the game and because you're a ranger you want to st you're staying back anyway so your concentration will probably not be broken so spike growth if you haven't used it it's so good as an aoe okay and again we're not replacing any of these spells they're just so damn good for this build but now we got five levels of ranger and now it's time to multi-class baby at level six we're going to multi-class out of ranger because we're pretty much Honestly, uh, at level five, rangers, they, 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 I, I, in my opinion, they peak at level five. After level five, they don't really get great spells. They don't really get great abilities. But I'd say for the first five levels, rangers has one of the best, like, powers, uh, you know, power spikes in the game. But beyond level five, they're pretty useless, uh, in my opinion. Larion, they need to fix that, okay? Um, so we'll be multiclassing at a ranger at level six, and we'll be going into rogue, right? A rogue. Obviously, you get the sneak attacks, which do work with, with range attacks, by the way. Crazy. And you'll probably have advantage 
um, because you'll be sneaking around and whatnot, or you'll probably have a teammate close enough for it to, to, to be able to proc sneak attack. So you'll be procking sneak attack pretty often with this build, okay? And as far as the extra abilities go for the expertise, I just went with the sleight of hand stealth stuff and acrobatics so you don't get pushed off ledges, you know what I'm saying? Just a regular dexterity type user. So that's level one for, for rogue and level six overall. At level seven, we're going to go another level into rogue, level two rogue. Uh, uh, so hide, dash, and disengage all now become bonus actions for you, which is actually pretty useful. And because of the, of the subclass that we'll be taking with rogue, you'll have two bonus actions. So one of these, if you need to use it in a pinch, you can now use them as a bonus action. And that's level seven. We're taking two levels of rogue. At level eight, we'll be taking another level into Rogue, and this time we'll be taking the, yes, you guessed it, the Thief subclass. The Thief subclass is just, I mean, it's just OP. <laughs> it's OP because of one, because it only gives one thing, but that one thing changes the game so much, and that's, of course, Fast Hands, which is basically another bonus action so you, you will if you need to disengage you now have two bonus actions you can disengage for your bonus action as being a rogue you can run away and then fire another attack as a bonus action with your off-handed uh, hand crossbow crazy okay uh, you're probably gonna see a lot of builds with um, with thief in it just because an extra bonus action and of course fighter with that action surge an extra action action economy in this game is how you rule in combat and thief just has that okay you have it for free every turn all all day every day level eight level three rogue subclass thief all right at level nine we're actually going to stick with one more level of rogue because we want that feat at the fourth level of every single class and the feat that we're going to choose um is not ability score improvement this time because at this point your deck should already be 20 either through the hag hair or through an item that i'm going, that I'm going to show you a little later um but of course the feat that we're going to take is sharpshooter which ha does have a minus five penalty to your attacks but if your attacks do land that's a plus 10 damage to every single attack and with this build you're going to be attacking a lot per turn okay so um the minus five uh by now at level nine we should have items we should have things we should have uh, our teammates should be casting stuff like bless on us at this point in the game so at this point uh, the minus five penalty shouldn't really matter and of course we'll be uh now we have access to a certain item that will give us advantage on all our attacks, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But now at this point, at level 9, Sharpshooter is definitely the feat that I would take. You're going to add so much damage to, uh, to, your, uh, to your output, and uh, it is such a spike once you get here. But now, next level, at level 10, we're going to totally respec, and um, I will show that in just a bit. All right, so like I said, once you reach level 10 with this build, it is time to respec into a whole nother class. And what is that class? It is Bard. It is in fact Bard. The Bard is actually a better Ranger than the Ranger, and will, but it doesn't, it doesn't get there until we reach level six with Bard. So let's go through it. One to six with Bard, this is what I would do. Level one, boom, pick Bard, and they still have proficiency with hand crossbows and light armor, which is what matters most. And as far as the cantrips that I would choose, Vicious Mockery, it gives, if it lands, it gets a disadvantage to on the opponent's attack roll. Pretty solid there. And then I would, whatever here, for the second cantrip, just choose whatever you want. I chose Friends because Friends is very useful in dialogue. And uh, as you can see, we're getting charisma with this build. So you might be uh, the second face of the group. So having friends is pretty nice. Other, otherwise, if you already have someone that has friends and you're, if you already have a talker in the group, then just get whatever you want. Mage Hand is very useful for throwing stuff around. Light is very useful for, for those who don't have dark vision. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and as far as the race, uh, I don't really go over races in these builds because race doesn't really matter too much uh, because they don't they don't give uh, ability score increases like normal D and D. So I would just say pick the race that you that you want to look like. I, I make most of my uh, we're using a star on here obviously, but most of the the race that I choose the most is tieflings because or half orcs because tieflings and half orcs look, look cool as hell, 
and that's pretty much just for aesthetic. Yes, they give some some things that may or may not help the build, but for the most part, it doesn't really matter as far as what, what race you want to go. You know what I'm saying? So pick what race you want. Uh, as far as the spells that I would choose as a level one bard, Longstrider, again, ritual spell. Disguise Skelf, again, ritual spell. Uh, and uh, I just chose Healing Word here just in case, because we have two bonus actions, because we will be multi-classing into Thief again. If, you, if your team needs it, then throw a Healing Word out there as a bonus action. Someone might need it, you never know. Or to pick up a down teammate, right? And as far as the last spell, I, I would recommend a Concentration spell. A Fairy Fire is good, but we already have attack rolls uh, as advantage for this build because of, again, a certain item that we'll talk about later. So I went with Bane, because you probably already have someone in your party group casting Bless on you guys. Having someone cast Bane on the enemies is pretty damn good as well. They get minus four penal minus 1d4 penalty to their attack rolls and saving throws, which could be a game changer. You know, you don't really see people casting Bane too often, so you could be that one. You know what I'm saying? So, boom. And the starting instrument, if you're not choosing a hand drum, then what the hell is wrong with you? Okay, hand drum is clearly the coolest, all right? As far as abilities go, uh, you want to get your dex as high as possible. Again, if you have the hag hair, put it to 17. But if you're in a party, you probably won't be. Put it to, uh, so I put it to 16 for most scenarios. And instead of wisdom being our spellcasting modifier, charisma is our new spellcasting modifier. So we want to bump charisma as high as possible, which is 16. And then the rest points you could put in wisdom just so you could boost your abilities here, which is going to be survival and perception. Otherwise, just choose stealth. Make sure you're proficient in stealth. Make sure you're proficient in sleight of hand. Acrobatics too, so you don't get shoved off. And of course, if your team needs a face, you can remove all this shit. And put it all into the into the charisma stuff. It's just whatever your group wants. But for my group, we already have a talker. So I went for survival, stealth, acrobatics, and sleight of hand. So that's level one with Bard. At level two, we're still sticking with Bard. Uh, and then level two with Bards, you get some pretty cool stuff like Jack of Trade, which means you add half of your proficiency bonus in all ability checks that you are not proficient in. So if your team needs that... If your team is is lacking uh, somewhere in the ability checks, you could step in and do that form. And of course, you get Song of Rest, which is a extra short rest you get. Uh, and if you're playing one of those campaigns that are pretty hard, um, which this game isn't hard to be honest, but you can add rules to make it hard for yourself. Like if you're soloing the game, this could be very, very helpful. Song of Rest, super useful. You could save some camp supplies there. And the spell that I would choose, I, I like Thunder Wave, not because of the damage, but because it it can push things away and pushing in this game is pretty good especially there are so many fights where you can push an enemy off a cliff instantly killing them no matter how much hp they have so i recommend getting thunder wave also uh you are a range build and you have disadvantage against targets that are near you so you don't you don't want targets near you so you want to be to keep them away you want things like thunder wave you know what i'm saying another good spell that i would choose is sleep is it is not a concentration spell and you could upcast it to put targets to sleep as long as their hp is low enough but for me i like thunder wave i like pushing things away and that's level two as a bard at level 3, as a bard, we are going to choose our subclass. And what subclass do we choose? College of Swords. And the reason why we choose College of, College of Swords is because of these. Flourish. And the flourish that we'll be focusing on is slashing flourish for the ranged. Because you get to attack two enemies at once. And by the way, you can attack the same enemy twice. And it only counts as one attack. So... This is the reason why we are not being a ranger. We're, being, we're gonna be a College of Swords bards because of this, because they actually deal more damage than rangers do. And of course, it costs an action and a bardic inspiration. So you are not gonna be the kind of bard that supports the group, uh, really. You wanna, you're gonna be a damage bard. So all your bardic inspiration is not gonna be used to inspire teammates. At least most of the time it's not. It's going to be used for you to use as slashing flourish ranged, okay? You can use the other stuff. You know, you can teleport, blah, blah, blah. You can uh, add a forge to your AC in, in, in tight situations. These are useful. But for the most part, 99% of the time, you're going to be using, you're going to be doing damage and you're going to be using slashing flourish to, be, to, to, to do two attacks in one. Crazy, okay? And the spell that I would choose as a slashing flourish bard uh, ranged is hold person. Hold person is very good. 
uh, if you do successfully hold a per hold a humanoid, that all attacks against them are crit attacks, um, and a critting with that many attacks uh, as this build with two hand cross with double hand crossbow is a lot of freaking damage. So I would choose hold person. Other good options are um, silence to, to to mess up those spell casters. Um, knock if you don't got someone, but. Actually, knock wouldn't be very useful because you should already be the person unlocking stuff uh, or pick locking stuff in the group. Invis is pretty good for those because you are the sneaky type. Um, enhance ability is pretty good, but this seems like a waste of spell slots because you should already have someone um, be that that should be using enhance ability. We're more of a combat focused bard, so I would focus on hold person or cloud of daggers. Cloud of daggers is is a underrated damage spell it does damage when you cast it and does damage on the beginning of the turn so basically it does it basically does um double of what it says because it, it you can probably count on it to do more than four to 16 damage every time you cast it you know what i'm saying so i always recommend hold person or cloud of daggers both are concentration spells um, and both are probably single target focused cloud of daggers cloud of daggers is an aoe but it's a very small aoe and you're probably using it on one target anyway but if you're fighting multiple more enemy more than one enemy you're probably going to be casting bless in any case but for me i chose hold person because uh we already had the aoe figured out with bane and now we have single target figured out with hold person you know what i'm saying and of course college of swords slashing flourish is crazy unfortunately we're not going to have archery as our fighting style because I, I don't know why they didn't add it as bard they i mean it would make the build even better if archery if the archery fighting style was here uh so we just put two weapon fighting which doesn't affect us at all because we already have the damage added but just pick it just just because you know what i'm saying and i'm pretty happy with our spell list you can change out whatever you want this is what i'm rocking with okay so that's level three as a bard at level four as a bard you get another cantrip i chose light because light is very useful for for teammates who don't have dark vision otherwise you could choose minor illusion because it actually is a nice distraction if you're trying to steal stuff or if you're trying to have an enemy you know distract an enemy minor illusion is pretty useful but for me i chose light because light's just good all throughout the game okay as far as the spells go uh, i actually didn't think any of the level two spells were pretty useful so i went with another ritual spell speak with animals it does not cost a spell slot and uh because um you're probably because you're the ranger rangers are normally the the animal handling person in their group so i'm going to speak with animals just so i could talk to animals but for you uh and that and that's just because the the spells that you'll be that, you, that you'll be concentrating on are probably bane or hold person anyway any of this stuff is not really that much better so i chose speak with animals but for you just choose whatever you want okay and of course the feat that we're going to go for now is to bump our dexterity as soon as possible to, and of course the hag here this should be 20 but if not it's 18 and it's all good at level five with bard we get another bardic inspiration which means another slashing floors which means another two attacks that we can do in a round okay uh and of course um this build does use so every fight you're probably going to be using all your bardic inspirations um and luckily as a level five bard your bardic inspirations are now available after a short rest so um because and that's why we can't really start off with this build early we have to respec into it at level 10 because early game you don't have enough bardic inspirations and you don't have enough items to make the build pop uh but now that we're respecting into it we get all the good stuff immediately such like font of inspiration which re which um replenishes all of our bardic inspirations after a short rest and you should be taking a short rest after every fight anyway so this is very very good with this build and as far as the spells we have now unlocked level three spells and the spell that i would choose for this build is hypnotic pattern if you haven't used hypnotic pattern before it's pretty crazy especially if you're a range it it covers a huge aoe okay and of course you can control where the aoe goes and you can pretty much cast it if you're if you're in a fight most likely you'll be able to cast it on all of the enemies and it basically um it basically shuts their turn down shuts their whole and this game is all about action economy and if you can shut down 10 enemies turns that's a whole nother round for your team to do whatever they want and of course you can cast this even when you're silenced uh, sometimes you get silence not not really that much but yeah i chose hypnotic pattern other good spells are glyph awarding it is not a concentration spell it is uh, just a random spell but it's pretty much like a you could turn it into a fireball and uh, or an ice version of it acid whatever glyph awarding definitely one of the underrated spells in this game 
Uh, but for me, I like to do damage with my range attacks because they just do more damage. But with Glyph of Warding, if you need some AoE, then then, then use Glyph of Warding. For me, I, I like shutting down my opponents, and Hypnotic Pattern definitely does that. Another good spell is Fear. Fear is um, um, when, when enemies are near you. The problem with Fear is they have to be near you to cast it. But when it does work, they drop their weapons, and it makes them frightened. And frightened enemies uh, have disadvantage, and you have advantage against them. So it's very useful. Another good one is Bestow Curse. But the thing about Bestow Curse is you have to touch an enemy. And you normally don't ever want to be in melee range with this type of build anyway. So I wouldn't really choose this. So for me, it was Hypnotic Pattern. But for you, do what you want, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's level 5 as a bard. At level 6 as a bard, this is a very important level because at level 6... We get some cool stuff like another spell. I chose Glyph Awarding, like Counter Charm, which lets us have advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened, which happens quite a bit in this game. Okay, the, uh, especially the frightened part. But the most important thing that we get at level six as a bard, as a College of Swords bard, is extra attack. Yeah, I don't know. They get it at level six instead of level five for some reason. But extra attack. This means um, every turn, without haste, without action surge, we can make two slashing flourish attacks okay with one action so that's four attacks by the way that's not including action surge or haste and that's not including the offhand attacks as well so you see where the word so now you see where we're going with this build okay um so extra attack this is the final level of bard that we're taking because of this and at this point we should have five bardic inspirations per fight uh four or five and there are some items that will help with that as well so and the spell, I chose Glyph Awarding to get some AoE. But again, just choose what you want. Choose what your playstyle is. I like damage. I like AoE. So we have the single target covered by far. You know, with whole person and attacking 10 times a turn. So I went with AoE, Glyph Awarding. You know what I'm saying? And that's level 6 as a bard. And now we're going to multi-class out of here and go back into Rogue. At level 7, we're going to dip into Rogue for a few levels. And the level Rogue, we still get our sneak, we get our sneak attack back. And I chose to uh, we get so we so as a bard and a rogue we actually get four expertise spells. So you should be able to talk or steal your way out of anything with this build, which makes it even more powerful. Um, but again, for my party, it, it is only the sneaky person. It is not the talker. But if you wanted to make it a talker, it would be proficient in that too. So this build is kind of it kind of can do everything, okay, except for AOE damage. But single target, stealing shit, being stealthy. Being a talker, this build kind of has it all, okay? So that's so that's level 7. We dip into level 1 rogue. At level 8, we do another rogue, rogue level. And of course, we get our bonus actions back for hiding, dashing, and disengaging. At level 9, we do rogue again to get our sweet thief subclass, which gets our bonus action back. And now we have 4... Oh, sorry. And now we have... Um, Four attacks as our action because of slashing flourish gives us two attacks and our extra attack from being a swords bard so we have four attacks coming from our one action and we have our two attacks from our offhand so that is now I believe um, six attacks in a turn at level nine okay and at level ten we're going for another level another level rogue why to get the sharpshooter feet of course uh, and and I just said we get six attacks. So if all six attacks lands without adding the damage of the dies, we that is an that is a um, at least sixty damage. If all six attacks lands, that that is at that is ten times six damage being added on top of our damage dies. Crazy, crazy. Okay, and now we've got our all the levels in bard. We got our all our levels in rogue. And our final two levels, you probably know where I'm going because we want to attack more. Um, so here we go. At level 11, yes, we are going to multi-class again. And this time we're going to dip into fighter because they give two great things. At level 1, they give archery. So we have archery back. Plus two, dam plus two bonus to range weapon attacks, which we're going to need if we're going to land our sharpshooter attacks. Okay. And of course... At level 2, what do fighters get? They get action surge. And what does that mean for us? Well, I'm about, to, I'm about to show you in a second on how to play the build. But that means in one action, with slashing flourish and an extra attack, we can attack 
four times. Okay, so this means in an action surge, we have two actions. Each action gives us four attacks. That is eight attacks, not including our offhands. If you include our offhands, that is 10 attacks. And if you are hasted, that is another four attacks. And if you have an elixir of bloodlust, that is another four attacks. See, this is kind of, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> and of course, if you have another bard in your party, they can give you an extra bardic inspiration to help because you don't you don't actually have enough bardic inspirations to do all this. But if you had an extra bard in your party, you do, which is fucking crazy. Okay, so now that you know how to play the build, I would actually so. Once you get to these levels, once you get to level 11, I would respec and actually put your first level into fighter because fighters have proficiency. Fighters have proficiencies with everything, okay? And um, one of the uh, uh, there are a couple pieces of armor that we're going to need to use with this build, like medium armor that bards and rogues don't get. So once you get here, I would actually start off as a fighter and then do the do, do the six rogues, the four uh, the, the six bards, the four rogues, and then finish it off with fighter two. Uh, getting our 12th level and now the build is complete and now it's time to show you guys the items that I chose to use with this build okay all right so these are the items that I recommend for this bardish bow boy build all right um, so for me I went with a crit build because I figured okay hand hand crossbows kind of have a small damage die um, yes, if the sharpshooters all hit, it does a lot of damage, but I want to do, I want to do even more damage. Can I, so I wanted to see how much crit that I could stack with the build. Okay. So I made this a crit build to just make it do even more damage. And as you saw in the opening of this video, I pretty much crit on almost every single hit. And how did I do that? Let me show you. We're going to start off with the helm. Saravox Horned Helmet. Um... There is, and I'm going to try to explain these items without spoiling anything, but there is an NPC in Act 3 that, um, that, that, that you can kill. He's pretty strong, and his, his name is Saravok, okay? And this helmet gives you um, minus one to crit. So you need one less roll to crit on each attack, and this effect can stack. When I saw that this effect can stack, that's when I got the inspiration, the bardic inspiration, okay, to do this build. And we're going to use this stacking effect as you can see. So I'm just going to show the I'll, I'm going to show each and every single item and you'll be able to see on how much I, I'm able to stack this effect. And this is as far as I'm concerned, this is the best item, the best helm that does this. There are other helms that do it, but you need to be hiding. For example, this I think this is the earliest helm, the Covert Cow. This does the same thing, but you need to be obscured. You need to be, you know, kind of hiding. Okay. Uh, another helm that does this is the Dark Dark Justiciar helm, which you can find in the in the Gauntlet of Shar. All right. Um, but for me, I chose this one because it stacks. Another really good option, though, if you don't if you don't want to do the whole stacking crit thing, another good option is actually Diadem of Arcane Synergy. So this this you can get at the Crash for the Githy Yankees uh, Lazel story. And this gives, when you inflict a condition, which is all the time, uh, for example, uh, being paralyzed is a condition, which you can do. Uh, critting someone is a condition. Um, most of your bardic bard spells afflict, uh, affect a condition. So you pretty much have arcane synergy all the time. And your weapon attacks deal additional damage equal to your um, spellcasting modifier. Okay, and your spellcasting modifier is your charisma. So that's plus three damage. That you're adding to each hit so if you want to if you want a more consistent damage then i'd recommend using this i used this for a very long time until i decided to, to to switch it to a crit build each one is good though each one is good but i wanted to make a crit themed build so this so i chose to use saravox helm okay so bang um and yeah these are optional items like i said you can get these fairly early and that and i would choose those An another um another pieces of gear that i that i'd recommend as well is um the helmet of grit it gives you an additional bonus action which gives you an additional attack but you, uh, you this is built is pretty squishy so i would not recommend this helmet but if you're one of those players that, that one of those players i love being a glass cannon you could use this another good one is um 
Mask of, the Mask of Soul Perception. This gives you plus two bonus to attack rolls, initiative, and perception checks. So uh, this will help with Sharpshooter because it gives you a bonus to attack rolls. And you want to make, you really do want to make sure you go first with this build so you can land your, your hard hitting hits and position yourself in a place to where you won't get hit to break your concentration on your stuff, right? So this is pretty good too. But for me, I chose the Crit Helm, Sauravox Helm, okay? That leads me to my next item, the Shade Slayer Cloak. You can also get this in Act 3 at the Guild Hall on one of the kitty vendors. Um, while hiding, the number you need to roll to crit is a, is reduced by 1. So you're probably going to be the one initiating fights with your build because you're you're going to be a sneaky deaky. You know what I'm saying? Maybe one of your teammates has greater invisibility to cast on you. If someone casts in greater inv invisibility on you with this build, you you'll be doing crazy you'll be critting pretty much every single hit you'll be doing insane damage and you can even replace one of the rings that we'll talk about a little bit later you know what i'm saying but i chose to use this just because i wanted to stack that crit as as much as i could but if you don't want to use this you can also use the cloak of protection which is pretty much you can consider this best in slot for every single build because it gives you plus one ac and plus one saving throws and that's just super good for defense but for me i like damage i like critting so i chose slade shade, shade slayer cloak okay the chest the chest is a little confusing i know um but the reason why i'm wearing this is because i chose to use to use the hag hair on someone else which is will i chose to use the hag hair with someone else in my party so because of that i didn't have max decks and then in order for me to get max decks was i had to put this on which gives you plus two to your decks and advantage to all your all your ability checks and that includes sleight of hand stealth um to, to your dexterity ability check sorry and your acrobatics so i was never shoved and I was never, um, I, it was very easy for me to stealth around and it was very easy, easy for me to pick locks and disarm traps, okay? But if you don't want to use this, then a very good second option, um, if, for example, if you did get the hag here, if your dex is already at 20, then this, this would be pretty useless, then I can recommend using, of course, the armor of agility. This is, uh, for dex users, this is easily best in slot because you add your dexterity modifier onto this. So, uh, for example, if I put this on, my AC is now 24. It went from 18 to 24 by putting this on. That's fucking crazy. I, I'm pretty much a tanky version of the build. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I need to, I, I like, I like damage. I like being a glass cannon. So I chose the graceful cloth. But if you, uh, if you want to be pretty much unkillable and pretty much just do the same amount of damage, I just use armor of agility. And of course, the earlier version of this, you can find uh, you, you you can find the armor of agility in Act Three in one of the vendors near Sorcerer Sundays. And if and if and if you're not in Act Three, you can find a lower version of it, which is still pretty damn good as well. At the last slide in in Act Two, want to my AC is 22 with that on. You know what I'm saying? So. There are some good options there. But for me, I chose Cat's Crates because I like damage. I like being sneaky. And there you go. Now for the gloves. This is interesting. So at first, I was using I was using gloves that gave more damage. I was using gloves that gave more um, uh, boost to my attack rolls. But, you know, the build really only shines the more bardic inspirations that you have. You know, and because you're the bard in the group, you probably don't have another bard. You know what I'm saying? And without these gloves, we only have four Bardic Inspirations. So we can only use Slashing Flourish four times in a fight, which is probably your, your first turn. And then the rest of the fight you know, is pretty useful. These gloves add an additional Bardic Inspiration and give you one AC as well. And they're called the Wondrous Gloves. I believe you can get these gloves at the Underdark Grimforge. Uh at some mimics just look around make sure you, you're, you're you're not just talking to the main npcs just look around i, I i'm pretty sure it's near the underdark grimforge t um teleport spot and you can find some mimics they're gonna have these gloves and they're pretty perfect with this build okay they're not only perfect for, for bards but for this build in particular it's really good because this 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 means you have another slashing flourish as part of as part of one of your turns and it gives you one ac so this gloves very very good i recommend these and i pretty much wouldn't change it out for anything else okay as far as the boots go same thing here i found these boots where did i find these boots i forgot where i found these boots listen if if, if you want to know where any of these items are that i'm explaining in this guide just google them this is not that type of guide, you know what i'm saying i'm just showing you guys what items to use and, and what items that i recommend um but i recommend these boots because 
uh, in a fight, in a long fight, you're pro you're probably going to be out of Bardic Inspirations pretty fast. Okay, if it goes past like three turns, so you want to, you want ways to restore your Bardic Inspiration, and there aren't many ways to do that outside of combat, but you can do this inside of combat, I believe. Play yes, you can. Uh, and I've definitely used this thing in, in, in combat. So Boots of Brilliance, best of slot. These two are, I'd recommend, even though these two don't really give damage, they kind of do in, in, in a passive sense because they help with your Bardic Inspirations. And your damage comes from Bardic Inspirations. You know what I'm saying? So Wonders Gloves, Boots of Brilliance, very good items for this build. I'd recommend them. And if you don't want to use them, you can just use near boots that give you Misty Step. You can use those Dimension Door boots to give you move, to give you another mobile ability. You can just use Damage Gloves. You can use Attack Gloves if you don't want if you don't like these. But for me, I found that not only were they good for the build, but they fit thematically. You know, as a Bard Ranger, they fit very nicely. So I like these items. Okay. Okay. And for weapons, so these are stat sticks. We're, we're never going to be in melee range using these, so I wanted to choose some stat sticks, and I chose Knife of the Undermountain King. This is available at the crash pretty early in the game. You can get this in between Act 1 and Act 2 if you follow Lazel's story. Um, and again, it, it stacks the crit thing. The wielder scores a crit when rolling a 19, okay? And this goes lower and lower and lower the more we stack it. And of course, when they roll 2 damage or less, we roll the dice, taking the highest result. So we pretty much have a, have advantage not only not only on our attack rolls because of this ring over here, but we also have advantage on our damage rolls. So we're pretty much be doing max damage every single attack, which is even crazier with this build stacking on top of sharpshooter. It gets pretty nuts. All right, um, and of course you have advantage on attack rolls against slightly or, or heavily obscured targets. I think that still applies even if you're even if you're not attacking with the melee. I'm not entirely sure. But it doesn't really matter because we're getting advantage anyway because of our ring, okay? And as the off, as far as the offhand goes, again, we want to stack the crit thing. So I just chose the item, or should I say, Orin's Dagger. Orin's Dagger, probably the coolest looking weapon in the game. One of the coolest, especially if you see, if you watch the cutscenes, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, it just has the crit thing. We're just trying to stack the crit, so we make sure we crit on every single attack. You know what I'm saying? And it looks really fucking cool, you know? Uh, and now let's move on to our main weapons. The Hellfire Hand Crossbow. This can be obtained in Act 2 in the in the Gauntlet of Shar. You know, the, Bows, uh, the Balthazar thing. Raphael even gives you a quest to go kill uh, this guy named Jurger. Okay? And he drops this Hand Crossbow, which is... Um, very, very good. It's just, uh, I believe it, it is the rarest hand crossbow in the game. I could be wrong on that, but of course the high, the rarer they are, the more, the more enchanted the weapon is. I mean, and we're looking for these cause the more enchanted they are, it's plus one to it's, it's a boost to our attack rolls and a boost to our damage rolls. We're not really concerned with using, with using a scorching ray. We're just more, we're just more concerned with it being as rare as possible. Okay. And of course, uh, it, you can burn enemies because you're probably uh, going to be hiding or invisible while you're attacking. So a very good weapon, definitely best in slot as your main hand. And for your offhand, uh, you, you want to pick up the Near Misser. This is also an Act 2. This can be obtained in one of the Moonrise Tower vendors. I think her name is Roa Moonglow. I think. <laughs> Sometimes I wish they would say on the item where you bought it and who you bought it from. They should add that. But anyway, this is definitely your offhand. Uh, and and it, it actually replaces your normal damage with force damage. And force damage, um, it, I would say it's the best damage type in the game because there are very, very, very few things in the game that are resistant towards force damage. So when your main hand isn't doing much, turn to your off hand and bang, bang that bitch. You could even switch it if you want, you know what I'm saying, and do that. Um, but there are also things that are vulnerable to force damage in the game. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this makes this very useful. And again, it comes with Magic Missile. I wouldn't really use it, though. I would just use your, your attacks. Your attacks are where the damage is, okay? And um, now let's move on to our amulet. So because we are a crit build, because we're stacking crit, um, we'll probably be, be critting a lot. And when you crit with this amulet, you can paralyze a target. And when you paralyze a target, all attacks that you land on them are now a crit. 
Okay, this is kind of like using hold person on someone. Um, and this is and it's not asleep, so they can't be broken out of it. So if 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 something is a humanoid, that thing is dead. If you're using this build, okay. And you can get this in Act Two, off of the um, the House of Healing, I believe the main boss there. Um, and by the way, in Act Two, when you're fighting all of the Thorms, you know all of the last name Thorms, all of those mini bosses, you can talk your way each and out of every every single one of those fights, which I recommend because you get pretty much the same amount of XP. You know what I'm saying? So, as a crit build, I would definitely use this. All right. And as far as the rings go. So we want to make sure we have advantage all the time because we are using sharpshooter. All right. We're not always going to be invis. We're not always going to be hiding. We want advantage every single time. So this is the perfect ring for that. But I, but I would only recommend using this ring if you are like always keeping your distance because having disadvantage on saving throws can be really bad sometimes because the, you, because you, if they use spells that stun you, that paralyze you, that take you out of the fight, you're probably going to get affected by those spells. So if you're going to use this ring, you got to play smart and keep your distance as much as possible. Always hide, always stay away, be out of line of sight, all that type of shit. But, and if you don't want to use this ring, then just use a damage ring like, uh, like Caustic Band or something. But I find myself using this ring a lot because... Um, when, when you get advantage on stuff, that means your sharpshooter will land and your your sneak attack will land. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of benefits on using this item. But like it says, it's pretty risky. So use at your own risk. Okay. And the second ring that we're going to choose is Strange Conduit Ring. You can get this out of the crush as well. So yeah, a lot of these items are actually pretty available in Act 2-ish. And this is not an Act 3 build. All right. Um, like most builds out there and m like most builds that I'll be creating. <laughs> okay. But this build is pretty good in act two. Okay. And you can get the strange conduit ring from the, from the crash, from the inquisitor room in the chest in the middle of the room, I believe. And as a bard, you should always be concentrating on something, whether it be Bane, whether it be, um, hold person, whether it be hypnotic pattern, whatever concentration spell you, you picked, you should always be concentrating on that during battle and while you're concentrating on that spell, you get an extra bit of damage from this ring. Okay, so boom. Those are the items that I can, that I recommend, and those are the optionals that I recommend as well. Okay, and for the last thing that I want that I that I want to say for the items, uh, the elixir that we'll be using is the last crit stat stack elixir of viciousness. So now what I want to do is I want to count on how on how low we need to roll to get a crit. All right, so knife, 19. Helmet, 18. Um, cloak, 17. Viciousness, 16. And I believe that's it. So we need to roll a 16 or lower, a flat, a nat 16 or lower to get a crit. And we have advantage on every attack roll. So it's not gonna be every attack, but it's going to seem like every attack you saw in the beginning of the video. I, I, I think this is actually even lower. Who knows? But I was I, I pretty much crit on every single attack with this build. So either the numbers are wrong or it's bugged. But just expect to crit a lot with this build. OK, and when you crit, it doubles the damage of your dice on top of sharpshooter on top of attacking 10 times a turn. You can imagine it, it gets pretty crazy. All right. So, um. And now, I guess to end the video, I will show you guys how to play the build. Okay. All right, so same thing. We're gonna sneak. I wanna make sure we're in an unobscured spot like this one. See how the sunlight's doing that, okay. And now we wanna start beating the shit out of Hellsick. <laughs> we're gonna use Cloud of Daggers because that's guaranteed concentration and guaranteed damage. Let's get it going. Can I use a higher level? Well, I could even use that as a higher level. Oh, we're going to do that too. Boom. Let's go. All right. So the fight starts first. You want to get away from people. So let's go ahead and walk into the middle of the room. Hopefully we can keep concentration on this. All right. Here we go. Five bardic inspirations. That means five slashing florists. We could probably do that right now. Okay. 
Let's get it going. We're going to use both on her. Bang, bang. Automatic crit there. Double crit. Sneak attack crit. And she's almost dead. Okay, cool. Next slashing flourished. Boom. Attack one of these imps. Who we'll also have pretty high HP. We just crit again. We crit again. Low action surge. Okay. Slashing flourish. Boom, boom. Okay. Of course, we can do it again. Slashing flourish. Boom, boom. Oh, I missed that. Right, well. Two offhand attacks. Boop. Boop. So if I didn't misplay, we would we would have killed four things in one turn. And we still have one Bardic Inspiration left, which we can use next turn. And of course, once we're out of Bardic Inspirations, we can use Restore Bardic Inspirations during combat as well. Uh, to, to do another five Slashing Floors, which you'll be doing at this point in the game. Your, your team should be so strong. And you should be so strong to where combat isn't really, really going to be lasting more than three turns. So, there. That's how you play the build.